Nelson with What's Up Kansas City. Uh, this is part of our health and wellness segment. And we have, uh, by the way, one of our Kansas City Business Association members that deal with uh, mental health and issues of such, uh, uh, Ms. Sharice Mohammed. How are you doing, Sharice? I am very well. How are you? Doing just fine. Good. You know, I talked to you off camera, asked you to come on the show because I thought uh, when you did your uh, Kansas City Business Association interview, uh, letting the uh, community know what services you had, mm -hmm. uh, and then we got it a little bit into uh, mental health and, and different issues. And so what I'd like to uh, start off with is how do you see this uh, COVID-19 affecting uh, the overall community, but as you know, I'm more concerned with the African American community and on, on different levels, uh, the general community. And then because you were on the business show, how do you think that's affecting our businesses uh, from a mental uh, point of mind? And I'm just running it down. How do you feel that uh, this is affecting our youth okay. and our families? Run it down. Okay, so to start in general, how it's how I feel COVID-19 is affecting um, the community, our community specifically. Our community is not new to struggle. And when I say that, um, it's not to take anything away from the, the pains that COVID-19 is adding to the community, but we're very resilient. So when I look at our community, I see two things. I see pros and cons of COVID-19. First is the pros. I see us being able to actually sit still for a moment in um, our current situation and figure out some things that are going on with our lives because everything's been slowed down. So that's a, that's a plus for our community. Usually we're just struggling. We're on the go. We're consistently moving and, you know, there's always something to do. And so we don't have that time. So this is giving us a little bit of time for us. Uh, to a degree. Uh, negatively, it has added to some of the struggles that we already have, whether that be financially with work or um, child care or food. <laughs> um, being able to be social is one of the things that kept our people or our communities uh, together. And when that's taken away in an unnatural way, it causes problems uh, with things like depression and overuse of drugs and alcohol and whatnot, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later also. But um, so those are some of the negatives overall that I see with the COVID-19. Our health, um, it's, it's made us more aware of, of, of what's going on with our health. It's made us pay attention to our coughs, our colds, our, our sniffy noses and that type of thing where normally, especially with our black men, it's ignored. Um, Not me at this point. Oh, when when this first broke out, I'd have a sniffle or whatever. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, you're 68. You buy right? TV. <laughs> but it's but it's made you aware oh, and pay what? attention. Wash them. I I never really washed my hands like I supposed to. Just mm -hmm. being real, and I think that. You know, uh, as I tell some people, I be speaking truth to power, and I be trying to keep it real as I can. Sometimes I'd even use the restroom and don't wash my hands like I should. Mm. Uh, mm -mm. All, that's, all that's finished. <laughs> <laughs> I well, my that hands. is a positive yeah, for COVID-19. Right. That was okay. a positive uh, reaction. I'm saying I'm, I'm woke on that front, mm -hmm. and I think, if, if I'm woke, and I, I don't think I'm too much different from anybody else, you know, all of us, who we appear to be and who we are and what we say we do and what we do too, might be two different things. Hmm. And I figure uh, there are a lot of people like me that have changed their habits. Yeah, that's you, good. That's what, you're, that's you're, what you're the specialist in this. You, well, you ask about business and you ask about the youth. Um, and, you know, stop me if I, if I miss anything as far as your first question was concerned. But when it comes to black businesses, um, there has been a lot of rallying around opportunities that I've seen um, 
which is really, really good because usually we don't have the opportunity to look into loans or or grants or we don't have the, the community around the mindset of growing our business. COVID-19 has opened up a, a new avenue of communication for a lot of black owned businesses to say, hey, let's not miss out on X, Y, and Z and sending emails and talking to each other to make sure everybody's taken care of. Now, are we all getting approved for these loans or grants and whatnot and have what we need to get them? No. Is it an even playing field? No. <laughs> um, but the mindset that we are growing into to be able to take care of ourselves in our own is is um, a very, very good thing. I, I, had a, I had a conversation earlier today with, he was a past assistant city manager, but he was, he had head up the Minority Supply Council and he's been away for a minute in Oregon and he just came back, he's been back five minutes. He was asking me, he didn't see, uh, people that are in these position uh, looking at small African-American businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a couple that have really done really well. Uh, you know, I work with your sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a client that dealt with toilet paper and, and, and paper goods. Mm -hmm. And he had so much business. I'm glad you pointed out it was a t plus as a community start looking at black business. Right. You know, uh, his site was even crashing. So many right. people. Freedom were, Paper Company. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Freedom Paper. Uh, right. And uh, some of our businesses really uh, start to get more business behind mm -hmm. this because of the awareness. And as uh, the thing that I, I, you look at, but you don't look at, you pointed out that uh, we've had time to slow down. And with uh, that slowing down even from a, a holistic and a natural point of view, you even see that the animals were able to take back some of the parks. A little balance, right? And yeah. I was listening to KCUR yesterday, and they were talking about even the emissions uh, from these cars. Everything has gone down. Uh, just let the planet even have a break. It might be affecting us, but <laughs> <laughs> it, has a, uh, it has given the planet a respite for Right. Them. And nature has a way. You know what, Mr. Nelson, when you, when you highlight those type of things, we also have to be very uh, diligent on what type of information we allow to, to take over our lives because the negative and the positive, there has to be a balance there. Some people are overwhelmed with the negative of COVID-19 and the fears and, and the, the, the loss because people are dying. There is an actual um, epidemic, pandemic going on. So, you know, that sometimes you can be overwhelmed with. And if you don't create some sort of balance in your um, in your life to where you're getting information that's not only negative, you will feed illness and you will feed stress and you will create more opportunities for disease um, in your life. And that's not something that you want to do in this time and, and day. Um, so just even looking at, like you said, looking at, hey, let's, nature is even benefiting from this. Let's see what's going on positive. That's important because most people um, and immediately get drawn into the drama and the negativity because that's where the, you know, the fire of it is. But we have a whole picture that can't be ignored. And so I appreciate you mentioning that about nature. Tell me this, uh, how do you feel uh, these close quarters uh, with family, the interaction with family, do you think that was a good thing, a bad thing? Uh, because when I, when I grew up per se, uh, dinner was served at such and such a time. <laughs> if your club wasn't at the table, when you're supposed to be at the table, then you just didn't have no dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, and modernization and the fast food, uh, ha uh, the family's not sitting down like they normally would. But now that the kids were home and what have, how do you think that has affected us? in a uh, psychological way, a good way, bad way, or, and then, you know, sometimes too much family 
can be uh, uh, an issue. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Um, so from a ch from the youth standpoint, you know, I have three little ones in the house, and they're all teens. And well, now they're all teenagers: 13, 14, 16. And my 14 year old made a statement right before COVID-19 happened. Um, she said, I am so overwhelmed. She goes to Lincoln. She's, I'm so overwhelmed with all this work. She was thinking this in her head, but she didn't verbalize it till after COVID-19. So when COVID-19 hit and they were able to stay at home and do their virtual learning and, and you know, it, that was like an answer to her prayers, not socially, at all but but it made uh, it made two things happen number one it made the parent have to sit down with the child and communicate about what's going on with their school with their life and that is a plus communication is always a plus um once our children get out in the world a lot of times the world will start to raise and, and put things into our children that we didn't necessarily put there and then we're dealing with the after effect well when you have something like this where you, you're throw the family back together. Now you're starting to discover each other and find out who each other really, who these people really are in your home. Same with your spouse. If you have one in your house or a, a mate in your home, now all of a sudden, hey, turn around. Now all of a sudden. <laughs> well, they can't see me, only you, yeah. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, you have to rediscover yourself and these people that are living in your house. And that is a good thing because communication is usually cut when you don't have close ties. Now, as far as having to sit down and eat and whatnot, every family dynamic is going to be different. And you know, I'm from a judge free zone when it comes to how you choose to live your life, you know, as long as it's in a positive manner and not hurting anybody, there's a limited amount that I really want to, to, to focus on when it comes to that. But the, each child can handle things differently socially for, for, for the youth, it's, it's hard because they're in a stage where this is where they kind of are finding out who they are. And now they don't have those, those other entities to bounce things off of. It's been a disconnect. Um, and then if they're younger and a mother or a father has to work and deal with Lower your screen little just a little bit. You said what? Lower your screen just a little bit because you're at the top. No, down, down. Okay. Well, uh, up, I should say. Up, up. Uh, right there, right there. Okay. Go ahead. So if you have little ones, it's different dynamic than if you have teenagers, you know, that are, are more, more responsible because it weighs heavy on you when you have little ones. It's harder. And so, I, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, well, it's been fine because, you know, now we can talk and we can get together. Part of that's great, but part of it is not. So, that, you know what? That's the other thing. I'm, I'm glad. See, talking to you, not just like as a therapist and, and in your field, you have kids, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like you know what's going on. How do you think the kids that have had to stay home, that their families are not uh, financially uh, where they can be on the internet mm -hmm. and where they can have, because this is part of their day-to-day -day life, normally talking, texting. How do you think that uh, that has affected uh some of the kids um some of it it has not affected very well um i know from experience and dealing with children because i like to reach out um they they have a struggle with this the the normal social interactions because they're so tied to the internet they're so tied to their phone so when they're forced into this brand new world of sit down and talk let's play video game i mean uh board games instead of video games or let's you know do this or jacks let's paint nails or you know go, go outside when they're thrown into a world that's different we have to be patient and give it time because there could be a lot of kickback and there has been kickback with sadness and depression and frustration with children and, and, and you know uh because a lot of times mom or dad is paying your bill, right? Mom and dad's not working now. Mm -hmm. And mom and dad have other responsibilities that they can't pay that $50 a month or mm -hmm. what have you. And how does that, you know, that, that, that's where we get into that mental health uh, mm -hmm. deal. How, resentment at, at that. And, and kids, you know, they don't, they don't, uh, uh, really critically think about what's all they know is i want this right and my friends have Media gratification yeah and i don't have that and I, mm -hmm. I would think that that 
and 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 I know as a parent, even though mine, the youngest is 36, but I can go remember back in the day when your friends have and you don't have, that can mm -hmm. cause a bunch of mental <laughs> issues and yeah. discontent. Uh, what, what do you have to say a, a little more on that? I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, Mr. Nelson, and to all of your viewers. A little bit of no is not bad for a child. Um, because it, I, you know, because we have to learn how to how to get through this life in this world, and everything is not going to be perfect and be handed to us. I I know with my my growing up, you know, sometimes we try to do things for our children that we didn't have, or give them we, we, things we didn't have, and we end up being extreme to to the other end of the spectrum, and that's not good for them either. I had to acknowledge as a parent that. My children not knowing what um, need is, <laughs> is good and bad. So sometimes you have to sit down and be, communication is always key. You have to communicate with those little people because they are little people. They're not just your child. You're responsible for them, but they're their own individual little people. So sometimes as parents, we've got to put our ego aside sit down with our little people and explain to them bills, explain to them responsibilities, explain, explain to them making the hard decisions because that's the lesson that needs to come out of it rather than you just can't have what you want. Um, we are all to a degree children in the mindset of immediate gratification. That's never going to work out for us in the long run. I think this is the perfect time. As you said that things have slowed down where you might not have been sitting down with your kids mm -hmm. having these type conversations. This is, the, for all you parents that are watching, I think this is a perfect time to talk about the birds and the bees, mm -hmm. talk about finances, talk about responsibility, exactly. talk about uh, furthering your education. And do you see these type things can happen in life? Do you see the position I'm in? Do you want to be in that position? These are the things that you need to be working on and so forth yeah and it's a great time to 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 invest in your in your ch your children because once you pull away from the rat race then you can kind of start seeing where to put energy into their their likes their dislikes helping them to discover themselves um when i was when i was working with people with dealing with depression or am working with them but you know dealing with my clients so one thing that i realized that i learned is that most people once they hit their low points they don't have the tools to dig themselves out because they've never in their high moments discovered who they truly are. And so you have to start that somewhere. And if you're trying to start it in, in your low space, it's harder. So once you are, life is about ups and downs. If you're riding a high, that's the perfect time for you to invest in yourself and say, okay, what is it that I like to do? What is it that, you know, intrigues me? What is it? What is it that triggers me, you know, start really doing some self-discovery because when you're low, that's when you're going to need to dig into that tool belt to start helping yourself dig out of your low point. Are you start? Are you still working with uh, the organization on, on truths uh, with the elderly? Yeah. Margaret's Place. Uh, Margaret's Place. Give them the plug. Yes. Uh, Margaret's Place. Yeah. Margaret's Place. How, how are the elderly uh, navigating that, that you're coming around? We are actually, I've been in communication with, uh, with that clientele. They were closed for quite some time and just reopened. Um, so we are starting, restarting the wellness program June 1st with Margaret's Place. Right now they're just getting reacclimated into the, the building, the space and, and, and the rules and, and, and the life there. But in the meantime, I've been dealing with them and helping them via phone um, and video conferences and that type of stuff. Um, the elderly... The elderly have the unique benefit of going through multiple different avenues and stages in life. They're older. They dealt with depression, the depression era, or they dealt with Jim Crow. They've dealt with hunger. They've had to plant food or, you know, so and they've had so many experiences. You would think that it would bother them more. But it's not. Um, the things that bother them are the things that have always bothered them. Loss of family, death, or, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, resources, for sure, that they've been dealing with this whole time. So 
as far as emotionally and, and mentally, they are kind of equipped because they have time invested in life to where they can balance out some of these emotional struggles that the youth and people who have not had the opportunity to get through some stuff did, don't have. Does that make any sense? Yes, uh, okay. because hold it, let me say this. I, I don't like to consider myself elderly, but at 68, I'm, I'm elderly. You live some life, right. Yeah, all right. This doesn't even really bother me. You yeah. know, I, I know what I have to do, as I said earlier, I know I need to wash my hands. I know I'm at a higher risk for uh, infection. Mm -hmm. I know I need the Clorox and wipe my door handles. And I need, I need to do certain things to be safe. But mm -hmm. this is, to me, this is no more than me going out getting hit by a car. Or, or 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 something. So yeah, the mindset's definitely different. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the the other thing I would like to uh, ask you, uh, what's your feelings on uh, we reopening tomorrow? i uh, the mayor comes on our show at least once a week or every other week, and tomorrow I'll be interviewing him on some things. And first we had he had the ten ten. Uh, thing where 10 people meet uh, and, and what have you. And now, you know, last Friday reopening, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm looking at uh, different cities that have reopened and what have you and different businesses that reopened. And then it's, it seemed like that curve just has shot way up. What's your, what's your feeling on, on that? I think, that there are a lot of uh, pieces that go into making that type of decision. And I'm glad I don't have to make it, to be completely honest. Um, but when it comes to just the the truth of the matter, whenever you, whenever the city decides to reopen, there's going to be an uptick because people are going to start commingling. You know that that's almost like one plus one equals two. We have to expect that there's going to be an uptick in in sickness because we we're now we took away what was working what you know what was was fixing it so with that being the case um we should i feel like we should as a city as individuals because we're responsible for ourselves also have a plan to counteract that that threat so yes the city is going to open or has opened and now there's going to be an uptick what does that look like on the back end for you know your already stressed medical um, personnel? What does that look like on the back end for your, for your essential workers who have been out here the whole time? What are we going to do to make sure that they are safe and benefiting from their sacrifices? And, and from a mental standpoint, now, like I told you, I wasn't worried about a lot of stuff, but when they reopen, that will be worried, worry me more than anything, <laughs> knowing that people feel things are safe or, and, and people know that they're not, but there's a certain group that's going to, and that can really be a devastating deal for us because yeah. everything starts getting lax and you bring that crap home to your family. Yep. And that's what I mean by having your own personal plan, going into this with your eyes wide open, not being blind because nobody's responsible for your, your safety and your family except for you. So, you know, when you when you say it exactly like that, what you can bring home to your family, minimize your own risks. You, you see what I'm saying? Don't go don't go out willy nilly just because you can. Sometimes that's just not the best thing to do. Um, you're responsible for yourself and your family and your actions. And responsibility is something that everybody doesn't take um, control of. They, they say, well, so-and-so said I can, so I am. So-and-so said you can, that doesn't mean you have to. So, <laughs> so, you know, take some bleach. You gonna run, take some bleach? You know, I mean, at the end of the day, Mr. Nelson, disease, viruses, illness, um, all of these things are a part of the world that we live in. So the more aware we are on how to stay safe and, and the more willing we are to, to make the tough decisions that may not always seem fun or, yeah, I mean, of course, I want to get together with my friends. I, I miss going out to, to eat. I miss laughing. I miss hugging people. I'm a hugger, <laughs> you know. I miss, I miss a lot of these things that, um, that we took for granted. I'm in a very grateful spirit right now because it made me to 
um, pay attention to some of the wonderful little things that day to day you just ignore, you know, being able to jump out the car and, you know, open the car door and hug your friend and hey, you know, and then jump back in. Now you're putting hand sanitizer, you can't hug, you, you know, go home, spray yourself down, wash all of these extras that, that are inconvenient and makes you realize that um, I had it kind of good when it comes to Mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. So being responsible, I mean, just people, please just care enough to make the hard decisions to say, you know what, I don't need to go to the store today or so-and-so don't have to come over here. We can do a, a video chat, you know, whatever it is, just to make sure that you're not a part of that number that we have to mourn later. All right. Uh, in closing, uh, do you have any parting uh, words of wisdom for our audience? Um. Wisdom, not sure if that's what it's going to be, <laughs> but information, absolutely. Um, I know that as far as mental health is concerned, there's still a lot of stigma around uh, depression and around us dealing with and getting help for depression. But I wanted to preface and say a couple things. Number one, it is overwhelming. People who deal with, you know, the overwhelming sadness and depression, uh, it, it has to be accepted that it's not something easy from the world, the outside world, because the person who's feeling it knows it. But sometimes that validation is extremely important. It's overwhelming and it is real. Uh, there is no one step fix to depression and, um, and those type of things. There's a lot of different modalities and methods that you can use, but there's no one pill to fix it. There's no diet that's going to fix it all. There's, no, there's not a one step process. So acknowledging that it's going to take work for us all, I know that every dynamic is different in our families and your family is going to be your responsibilities. So if that means when it's getting rough, you reaching out to somebody to help, that's your responsibility. There's no one to blame in the situation, but there are people who are responsible. So that's your responsibility. If you get to a place where you're not, trying to reach out or you won't reach out because you're so low on the other end of the spectrum. Now I'm speaking to family members and, and community and loved ones consistently reach out to people. You never know what somebody's going through. That's what I would like to leave everyone with because if you've ever been extremely down, depressed or sad or in a space where you just feel like giving it all up, the last thing you want to do is the hardest thing to do, which is to reach out. And most people don't. So continuously check on your people, call your people, send them, hey, Amazon, send them a, a gift card or, you know, something that you know they like, something they can just open the door and say, oh, wow, I, I didn't even ask for this. Put joy into other people's lives because there's a lot of pain and struggle and depression and frustrations out there right now. So we have to counteract that in any way we can. All right. What I want you to do is tell our audience and, uh, our business community and other organizations, how they can contact you to uh, utilize your services. Oh, sure. Um, well, I'm going to directly give my phone number. I've been actually doing free wellness check-ins for during the COVID-19 space because that's, that's what I want to do. Uh, my phone number is 816-309-2814. Uh, you can text, leave a voicemail, or, you know, or I may answer. Your email. My email, email is Sharice, S-H-E-R-E-E-S-E, at peaceforyourpieces.com. That's my email. And that's spelled P-E-A-C-E-F-O-R-Y-O-U-R-P-I-E-C-E-S, Peace for Your Pieces. All right. As always in closing, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.